Hey YouTube, this is Marcus or Garwin again with another video. Today's video is going to be about emulation. I'm going to show you guys how to set up and use a Nintendo 64 emulator on your Windows based PC. Uh, specifically this video is targeted at a friend of mine who has been asking about such a thing uh, for a little while and so I wanted to kind of show them how to get it set up. Um, full disclaimer, uh, emulation itself is not illegal. What is illegal is downloading games or BIOS files uh, from these third-party websites on the internet. Even if you own an actual cartridge of a game, uh, to remain perfectly legal, you need to dump your own BIOS or your own copy of the game ROM uh, to a file on your PC yourself. Now there are ways to do this even with cartridge based games. There are uh, you know do it yourself sort of uh, cartridge readers that you can use to connect to a USB port and dump uh, the ROM files from cartridges and most disc based games you can just put them in your except for Nintendo disc based games you can just put them in your optical drive and dump copies of them that way and even Nintendo games you can do it if you're willing to void the warranty and mod your console and, and use that to do it but anyway I just wanted to to clear the air and state that I'm not going to show you where to get ROMs I'm not going to show you how to do anything that is illegal I'm just going to show you how to set up the software and uh, uh, and get that going for you so on Windows I actually use Project 64. On Linux, I use Muppin 64 Plus, and I actually wrote myself a simple user interface for that. You can check out my channel uh, and look for it. Uh, but on Windows, I use Project 64. And uh, Project 64 has a website that's uh, pj64-emu.com. You just go here. You can get it for Windows, or they make an Android version. I have never used the Android version, so I don't know how good or terrible it might be. But you just click on the link for your particular platform and then downloads this file to your downloads folder. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this one and update the version of Project 64 that I actually have installed. Uh, and we're not going to launch Project 64 just yet. We're going to close all this out. And uh, there we go. Okay, now I have one of these uh, Retrolink N64 controllers. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. You can use any controller that will connect via a USB cable. You can use a wired PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 controller, even the wireless ones. Just run the USB charging cable to a USB port on your PC and you can use those controllers on your PC uh, to play your emulator games. Uh, the N64's controller is sort of unique and uh, a lot of games take advantage of the specific layout of this controller and it just didn't feel right specifically when I was playing GoldenEye because you know your strafing buttons are the left and right C buttons uh, and there's a it moves pretty slowly when you look up and down with the up and down buttons because they, they built it around these C buttons and so mapping those controls to a joystick didn't really feel right uh, so I went ahead and just ordered one of these for a couple of dollars here on Amazon and I use one of these uh, USB N64 controllers. So the first thing you want to do is whatever controller you're going to use, you want to plug it in before you open your emulator software. So we're going to go ahead and plug mine in. Alrighty, close that out. Now we're going to open project, well actually before we open it, let's make sure it's connected properly. Let's click our start menu and type the word controller and you're going to look for this setup USB game controllers, generic USB joystick, that's fine, we'll hit properties and you can see here this gives us the ability to press buttons and make sure they're actually picking up and working fine. Now let's open project 64. All right, so you can see here this is this is all there is. So the first thing we need to do is we can right click out here in this white space and hit choose ROM directory. And this is where you're going to point it to wherever you have uh, your games stored at. And we'll go to downloads, emulator ROMs, N64. Bam. And uh, then we're going to go to options. And we need to configure our controller. We're going to hit configure controller plugin. All right. 
and controller one. Now let me see here. Do I need to? Let me click, you click on one here. Okay, so I do not need to click X input or anything like that. So basically, you're going to go down the list here, click each one of these buttons, and then press the button on your controller that you want to correspond with that button on the in, on the uh, Nintendo 64 input. So I do left. And this is analog stick, yep. Yeah. Alrighty, and real N64 range. So if we uncheck that, can we change this? Okay, so well, I guess we just put this back where it was and leave it alone. We hit save, and then you, we're ready to roll. Uh, so let's click here, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. and there we have our game running now let's say you want the game to look a little bit better than it did originally or you know it, you you realize that when you scale up something of this resolution it looks pretty bad on an LCD let's go ahead and hit uh, can we stop emulation oh well we just did full screen So let's just close project 64 altogether and reopen it here you can go to options, configure graphics plugin, and here you can do a couple of different things. Uh, there's not a whole lot of settings here for the Nintendo 64, but what you can't, the biggest thing you can do is you can crank up the resolution, and basically what that will do is it turns up the internal resolution so that the polygons are actually rendered at whatever resolution you've got selected here. So you're not just blowing up a less than VGA quality image to a 1080p screen you know because you'll get really bad jagged edges and things of that nature so uh, let's go ahead and turn this up to about there and th this is just the type of v-sync if it works fine with whatever you want here you can turn that leave that the way it is uh, antistropic filtering what that does is if you notice that your textures look weird when you're viewing viewing them at steep angles uh, you can turn this up a little bit and it'll help with that but this also has a big impact on performance even though it's an N64 game it takes a lot of horsepower to emulate anything and so this may have a big impact on your performance if your computer is not quite up to snuff um, so we'll turn that up just a fuzz. Full screen anti-aliasing is just what it sounds like. You can uh, use a little bit of anti-aliasing to get rid of any jagged edges that you do see. So let's go ahead and hit apply. And then we'll leave it windowed for the time being. And we'll start up uh, Mario Kart 64. And there we go. The game is working properly. Now you can see in these pre-rendered background images, uh, or even Mario's face, so you can kind of see little polygonal lines on them. That's just an artifact that comes from blowing an image up that large, uh, uh, as, as far as resolution goes. Uh, and emulation is not going to be perfect. There are going to be games that just don't work. Even if you take a real cartridge and dump your own ROM, uh, there are going to be games that just do not work properly on an emulator. You can try different emulators to see if you can get better results with different emulators, but uh, you know, it's really just uh, most games work pretty good with Project 64. I haven't had any issues. Uh, the only games that I've had issues with that I remember, I think, are Pokemon Stadium games. Uh, but uh, anyway. That's it for this video. I just wanted to take a few minutes to show you guys how to set up Project 64. And like I said, um, you do need to dump the ROMs yourself. 
even if you have physical copies of the game like I did before our house burnt when I was a kid or if you still have them in your hands it doesn't matter Nintendo is still particularly aggressive about this sort of thing that it doesn't matter if you have an N64 with a controller and the game sitting there on your desk beside your PC they still consider it illegal to go download a digital copy of those games from some other place now it's okay to possess them if you dump those ROMs yourself but it's not okay to go download them from somebody else even if you have the game sitting there so if you guys have any comments questions concerns or suggestions regarding anything you saw in this video please feel free to post them in the comment section below and as always this is Marcus out y'all have a good one.